Welcome to our scripting tutorial series. Um, we're going to be learning how to write some um, some computer code into the Aurora toolset that will allow you to do a lot of really cool things and how, allow you to have a lot of control over how your story gets told in the game. And um, you know when you play through like a single player um, storyline from Bioware, you see a lot of really cool things happening in the storyline. You have to use scripting to do most of those really neat things. So that's what we're going to learn here. But most importantly, this stuff is going to be transferable to most programming languages. And so you're going to learn how to do things like store information in variables, um, control the kind of the flow of the program using if and else decisions and um, looping certain sections with different types of loops. Uh, you learn how to write your own functions. Um, and just, uh, you know, kind of the basic level programming that applies to every language. So, useful stuff. Um, so let's get started. Go to the File menu and choose New. And uh, I'll go through the Module Creation Wizard here. Let's name this Scripting Module. And then we're going to create a real basic area just to get us started with. We'll go to the area wizard. We're going to choose forest. And we'll name it something creative like forest. And we're going to make this um, a tall section, but we're going to make it really narrow. So it's going to be 8 by 2. 8 for the height, 2 for the width, and click Next. And then we can open the area in the Area Viewer and click Finish. And then click uh, Next and Finish. So this is what your area looks like. It's kind of just a long column here of space. Now, um, before we get into what we're going to build here, uh, let me just say this the information that we're going to learn from, um, kind of the lessons we're going to go through, were written by somebody out there on the internet. And um, his name, I don't know how you pronounce it. That's one of my pet peeves with like fantasy settings is you never know how to pronounce these stupid names people come up with. But um, it's uh, Kellowin or Selowin, C-E-L-O-W-I-N. And if you are interested, you can find his lessons uh, in print form just Google search for that, C-E-L-O-W-I-N, scripting tutorial. And it's really great information. Um, so somebody put a lot of work into this, and it, uh, it really does explain how things work really well. I just found that students didn't like to read through all the lessons. And um, so I'm going to do these video versions so it's a little easier to follow. Now, and I will also say, for those of you who are um, the type of student who would get a written pile of instructions and, and have a teacher say, hey, you should read through this so you'll learn a lot. And, and you say, no way. No way am I going to do that. That's a huge waste of time. I can't sit here and read for that long. Um, good luck. <laughs> if you are interested in being a computer programmer, a game designer, anything like that, um, you know, you need to be able to sit down and find information for yourself. And a lot of times that means you're going to have to read stuff. And uh, those of you that would do that anyway, and dive in and find what you need to know, you're probably going to do really well. Those of you who have a, have a problem with that, it's going to be tough for you as a game designer or a computer programmer. So be willing to find the information wherever you can get it. All right, having said that, we'll go to the easy version. We'll do a video tutorial here. Uh, all right, let's paint a new NPC down. And we'll do a human. And I think we'll go with... Convict. That's the one. And we're going to place him down um, at this end here. And we'll rotate that guy so he's facing us. And uh, for now, we can put our, our starting area up close to where he's at. In the future, we're going to want to have that farther back, but we'll get to that later. So here is our convict. Yeah, and he doesn't look real friendly. Look at that. <clears throat> so uh, what we're going to do with this guy is right click and go to properties. 
and then we're going to take a look at his scripts and we're going to clear them all out. If you use the tab key you can jump through the little selectors and clear them out quickly. Okay, um, now we covered these scripts a little bit in the previous tutorial series on uh, just how to use the Never Wonder Nights tool set, but uh, in this one we're just going to take a real in-depth look at some of these scripts that we can write. And we're going to focus today on Heartbeat, which is a script that gets fired every six seconds in the game, which equates to one turn in the game. And so every six seconds, anything we put in here is going to get called. Let's click the Edit button. And at the start, what you have here is just an empty script. It starts with void main and two uh, curly braces. Please pay attention to small details like these are parentheses, shift 9 and shift 0 on your keyboard. These are curly braces. They're different. They look similar from far away, but um, these are found right next to the letter P on the keyboard. And if you use uh, no shift, it's a square bracket. If you use the shift key, it's the curly brace. So that's where you find those, and it's, it is an important difference. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to write in some code here and type in what you see me typing. We're going to start with a, um, a function call, clear all actions. And it has to be written just like that with capital C, capital A, capital A, and an open and close parenthesis, followed by a semicolon. Um, you can find this function in the filter list if you click on functions, click on filter, and then clear, you can see, clear all actions right there. If you click on it, you get a little description of how it works here. We'll come to that later. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say action speak string, open parenthesis, quotation mark, If you find that I'm typing too fast for you, um, pause the video, uh, go out on the internet and look for a typing course and learn how to type. Okay, so we have a clear all actions. We have a series of action speak string commands where you can put whatever you want in quotation marks and the character will say those things. Then we have action wait, and that means it's going to wait one and a half seconds until it does the next action. And then we do action speak string here, and we keep doing that, that pattern until the song is done. Remember, this is the heartbeat script, so it's going to get called every six seconds, so it should run through this and then get called again and do it again and our little character should sing this song forever just because well, actually not just because because there's very important reasons actually um, it's in the heartbeat script and it gets called every six seconds so um, we'll save this and we're gonna call it um, SM for scripting module underscore um, singer underscore HB for heartbeat and we'll save it and it will show up now under your scripts right there um, let's close this and then also I forgot we need to make some changes to our character so go to the basic tab and um, let's go to his first name and let's name him singer and then we'll put that in the in the uh, character tag as well. All caps, singer. 
actually let's be consistent with our previous naming convention. We'll do CT, oops, CT underscore for character tag singer. And um, that is good, I think. Click OK. Let's save our module, scripting module. And, um, oh, you know what, guys? Uh, you should save yours, do save as, and make sure you name it like H1 last name or, um, or H5 last name, depending on your class period. That way you won't get confused with the other students module. I forgot to say that. So name yours uh, H5, your last name uh, scripting module, and then save it. And I'm going to cancel that. Okay, well, let's test it. We'll go to the build menu, test module. Okay, here he goes. He's singing away. And he'll sing forever. We'll go back to our tutorial here. Um, let's jump into that script again. You can find it over here on the left. Double click. And um, when you see these actions, okay, there's lots of, you type in the word action over here in a filter, there's lots of actions here, and actions get set up in a queue, and a queue is kind of like a waiting line, and they do one after the other, and so um, it has to finish all these actions before it can move on to the next one. So this clear all actions command, if you don't have that in there, and you run the action speak string, you keep going, if it doesn't finish them by the time the heartbeat calls the script again, you're going to get a delay and you're going to get actions building up that the character didn't have time to finish. So clear all actions at the start of a heartbeat uh, guarantees that you're going to start fresh. So that's why we do that. We can see an example of that if I change this to um, three seconds rather than five. If we just put in three here. Um, what you'll see is the character doesn't have enough time to finish the song before the script gets called again. So let's save that and then we'll test the module once more. I'll start singing here in a moment. Here he goes. Second line. Here's the third line. Oh and then jump back to the first line. So it never gets to line four, and line three is only spoken for just a fraction of a second there. Um, and that's the problem with uh, you know, the, the thing, not a problem, but you gotta watch out for that with the heartbeat script because it's only six seconds long and then it repeats. So we can escape that, exit. We'll change those back to 1.5. And um, save your module again. Save that, close it. Okay, that's it for tutorial number one. On the next tutorial, we're going to be covering how to set up local variables on the character or on the NPC, and uh, we'll be able to use those to keep track of things or make changes to things as we uh, move through our story.